Well, here we are again on a Friday, actually the fourth Friday of our Advent 2023 series. Dennis Darville with you. Over the last three Fridays, my son and I, Jonathan, have looked at, thought about, talked about um, peace and joy and hope. Well, this fourth and final episode is on love, perhaps the central theme of all of Scripture. And I want, to, I want to begin today by simply reading from 1 John. Hope you'll take the time to read our devotional and think about it. Um, you'll see that this is the text for today. And I'm also going to be using uh, St. Augustine, his thoughts on rightly ordered loves and disordered uh, love. So here we go. 1 John 4, verses 9 and 10. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. This is the love of God, that God sent his only son into the world. And in this text, the primary focus is on two things. One, so that we might live. He gave his life so that we might be empowered to live. And secondly, that his son might be the propitiation for our sins. Well, 1600 years ago, St. Augustine, the, the father of Western theology, a pastor in North Africa, wrote about rightly ordered loves. He'd spent a great deal of his life in disordered loves that had left him deeply empty and miserable. And out of that misery, he began to really search in earnest what it was that was going to really bring profound satisfaction and deep happiness into his soul. And, and what he discovered was, if I could paraphrase, was rightly ordering your loves which is to say being able to prioritize those things that are most important and then creating those subordinate things. And so finding a different way to love different things. And of course, at the top of that uh, is our love for God. But the only way we can do that, according to Scripture and St. Augustine, is by the grace of God. God first, as First John would tell us, God first loved us, and it was in God's love for us and the sending of his son to die at Calvary for us, to take our sins and to grant us his righteousness, but also to be able to send the Spirit of Christ to live in our hearts so that we might be empowered to do what he's commanded us to do, which is the duty and the delight of loving God. So St. Augustine would have a lot to say about this, and I'm going to simply summarize these in a few things. First thing that he would want to say is this, that a, a man who is just and live, wants to live a holy life, he needs to keep his affections under the strictest of controls, which he goes on then to say is, so that he neither loves what he ought not to love, nor that he fails to love what he ought to love, nor loves that more which ought to be loved less. Now, he has a lot more to say, but I'm just going to focus on those three things for this morning. Uh, the first thing is not loving those things that shouldn't be loved. Vices, inappropriate things, the evil things, sinful things. That's, that's obvious. Going after the wrong things, chasing after the wrong things will always, always, in invariably, inevitably, end up in a miserable life. But then he would go on to say is, we cannot fail to love the most important things with all our heart, which for Augustine is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So he would say our deepest affections, our, our most earnest pursuits need to be primarily focused on the love of God giving him our heart, soul, mind, and strength, which is really uh, Augustine thinking about, or Augustine thinking about, Christ's answer to the lawyer who wanted to know what you had to do to uh, qualify for heaven. Uh, Jesus' answer was to, this is the first 
and greatest and most important commandment, which is to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And, and to secondly, to love your neighbor as, your, as you love yourself, which is an interesting thought in and of itself. So Augustine's first thing is, hey, don't, don't chase things that you shouldn't chase because you're going to end up being miserable. Secondly, give your affections, your prioritize your deepest affections for the things of God, but then also to love the created order in a way that's appropriate. We are to love our spouse. We are to love our children. We are to love our vocations. But he wants to make sure that we rightly order those things, right? If you're thinking about this, you are to love your job. You are to also love your families. But if you love your job more than you love your families, then you have a disordered love. And invariably, um, it's going to have consequences. It's going to create chaos. We are too. It might surprise you. We're actually to love the game of golf. Uh, I love it. I've loved it since I was a little, little boy, since I was a seven, seven-year-old kid. Um, but we often feel guilty for loving things. Well, we should feel guilty about loving anything if we love it more than we love God. On the other hand, uh, the answer to that riddle or solving that dilemma is not to love God with all your heart and not love anything else. The answer to that is to love God first and foremost, then love your spouse and your children, your family. Love your careers, give, you, give it your best effort, uh, and then love your hobbies. And if that happens to be golf, then, well, praise the Lord. But if we start giving our best affections, to the game of golf or anything else over over the Lord, then we're going to find ourselves um, bumping up against some pretty hard, tough realities. So this Christmas season, be, be reminded. Let's give Jesus our best, and then out of that, um, out of that love for Him, uh, we will we will enjoy and 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 love those things in their proper order. Uh, in another book that Augustine wrote, Confessions, he says this, O oh, love ever burning, never quenched, which by that he means God. O oh, love ever burning, never quenched. O oh, charity, my God, set me on fire with your love. Give me the grace to do what you command and command me to do what you will. Indeed, Scripture in the Gospel of John says God is love. Indeed, He is. May you know the love of God in Christ this holiday season. And we'll see you, uh, just as a reminder, the week of Christmas, Monday through Friday, we sort of go silent. And so I'll see you, God willing, or as we say here in the South, God willing, the creek don't rise. I'll see you in January 2024. Thanks and God bless.